Good morning. I'm Pastor Sheets from the Church of Nazarene. Good to have you with us and uh, good to be able to join you online for these services during this uh, time of rather restrictions. And uh, as we look at God's word today, we're reminded that uh, last Thursday was Ascension Day. So we want to consider Jesus uh, leaving this earth when he ascended back into heaven and uh, then, of course, his return. So we'll read this morning from Acts chapter 1. The first couple of verses give a kind of an introduction of who Luke is uh, writing to and uh, of Jesus going. And in verse uh, 3, it begins of Jesus, whom he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Reading to the 11th verse. What a remarkable day that was when Jesus suddenly ascended. You can imagine the shock of the apostles at that time. Uh, Jesus' life was, of course, in stages like all of us. And uh, just as we review coming up to this uh, event, of course, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and then he grew up in Nazareth. And then, when he was about 30 years old, he started out in what we might call an itinerant ministry, uh, going from place to place, uh, ministering to people. And then he called 12 men to go with him and uh, trained them and let them see the miracles that he did and the uh, teaching, hear the teaching, and uh, for about three years, they worked together. And then he allowed himself to be crucified on the cross. And then he rose again from the dead to live again. And that's the joy of the Christian religion, isn't it? That we know we have a living Lord. And then he walked and talked with these disciples for another 40 days, giving them final instructions. And then... As he was talking to them, suddenly he began to rise from the dead. We can imagine the shock as they looked and saw him gradually going up. I can see them looking up, their mouths falling open. What is going on here? And suddenly he disappeared into the cloud. That was the last time he was seen on earth. He had ascended into heaven, the end of a project of his earthly life. Ends of a project are always exciting, aren't they? Uh, 
If you're building something and you drive that last nail in, or I imagine ladies, if they're sewing something and you put that last stitch in and you can say it's finished, uh, you know, I've completed the, the project. And uh, so Jesus had come down uh, from heaven and for 40, for uh, three years he'd ministered and then 40 days he, after his resurrection he talked with him. But now he had completed it. It was time to go home. Nothing like going home, is there? Uh, if you're away somewhere, it's great to get home. I know when I've been away on a trip, maybe gone to see my son, and uh, come down the highway, and you start to see a sign uh, along the road, so many kilometers to Trenton, and then a little further, a little more, and you see it. And then you see the lights there and say, ah, I'm almost home. And you pull off the highway and drive in, and it's so good to uh, get into that driveway and to be at home. Humble though it might be, it's, it's home. And uh, Jesus had left heaven's uh, glory. We're told a bit about that in uh, Philippians, uh, when Paul's writing to the church there, and he talks of how uh, Jesus had... Uh, left his, uh, his heavenly home and come down here. And it says that he made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being formed in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Came down from heaven to live among men, to minister to us, and even to go to that cross and pay the price of our salvation. Aren't you glad that he did that? But I imagine there was a certain amount of homesickness there. Can you just imagine Jesus living, leaving heaven in all its glory and coming down to this earth? Uh, whatever you may think of this world, we hear people's very negative attitudes sometimes and some more positive ones, but uh, I think all of us as Christians are looking forward to getting to heaven. We haven't been there. We don't know what it's like, but uh, we're looking forward to it because Jesus has gone there and we want to be with him, and so it's going to be a great day to go there. But for Jesus, it was even greater because that's a place that he'd left. That was his home. And so he came down and lived among us. But now it was time to go home. And he rose, ascended into heaven, back home. He had come, of course, uh, and uh, now it was time to go to make room for the Holy Spirit uh, to come. He says that in this uh, the passage that we read from uh, Acts chapter 1 there in verse uh, 4. It says, Being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. That was the Holy Spirit. They were to wait for him to come. We'll say more about that uh, uh, probably next week at Pentecost. But... Uh, that was his command, and he told them to, to wait until they received power from the Holy Ghost and then to take this message around the world. For some reason, it was necessary for Jesus to leave uh, before uh, the Holy Spirit would come. He told his disciples that back in the 16th uh, chapter of John's Gospel in the 7th verse. He says, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who would be our strength and our guide. But Jesus says, I, I have to go away first before he comes in all his power. The Holy Spirit was a sort of a visitor with them. Uh, but he was to become resident in them. In the Old Testament, we hear many times of Jesus 
uh, or of the Holy Spirit coming upon the uh, disciples or the uh, followers of Jesus of uh, God, and He came upon David and He came upon others uh, throughout that time. But it was a temporary thing. He came for a purpose, and then he seemed to depart. But uh, Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, as he did at Pentecost, he will abide with you. He says there that uh, he will not depart. I will send him on you. So Jesus, it was time to go to make room for him, to be a resident in our lives, to dwell with us. And that is a joy that we have as Christians, that we do not have to just wander through this life on our own, as it were. But uh, we have a guidance. It's good to, if you're traveling somewhere, uh, to have a good road map or uh, the uh, other applications we have nowadays in the car that can uh, talk to us uh, and tell us uh, where to turn. And I'm not sure just what I think of that, but I do think it'd be handy, you know. But to have somebody there uh, give me all those instructions, talk about a backseat driver. <laughs> those uh, GPSs are the, uh, the real backseat driver. But, but it is awfully handy. I've traveled with people and they've had this and uh, it's so much easier to get through uh, traffic and get in the right lane and things like that, because it's guiding us. And that's what the Holy Spirit is like in our life. He guides us. He says, this is the way. Walk you in it. And if we will obey him and go as the Holy Spirit leads us, we won't get ourselves into a lot of the trouble that we so often do trying to figure out things on our own. Isn't it good that uh, Jesus decided to send the Holy Spirit to abide with us, to be in us, and to guide us along the way. Jesus was, uh, uh, was God with the people, but the Holy Spirit would be God in the people, with us all the time. See, there were some limits when Jesus was here. He could only be in one place at one time because he was in a human body. And the disciples were with him at times, and they were without him. Remember time when they, he sent them across the uh, Sea of Galilee in their boats, and he stayed behind on the shore, and uh, they ran into trouble there. But uh, eventually Jesus came and walked with them uh, on the water and met them there. See, they were, couldn't be, he couldn't be with them at all times. But uh, now, through the Holy Spirit, we can have God's guidance at all times. In chapter uh, 14 of John's Gospel, and the 17th uh, verse says uh, of him, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That's the glory of the day that, that we're living in. And so Jesus ascended. He, he went up, and the Spirit came down, and the church went out. That's a summary of the book of Acts, really, in those three short statements. But why did he go? The, the, the angels that appeared with him as he ascended up said there's a reason. He's going up because he's going to return. Oh, I like that uh, the 11th verse. He said, uh, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which was taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He must leave before he could uh, return. Uh, this, we see a friend off on a, a trip somewhere, and we, we look forward to them coming back. Oh, we like to have them with, them, but, with us, but it was uh, necessary for them to, to leave before they come out. Perhaps you've seen someone off at an airport or somewhere like that where they're, they're taking off on a long trip, and uh, 
Uh, you hate to see them go, but uh, you're confident they'll come back. And you look forward to that time when they'll return. Maybe you count down the days, mark them off on the calendar or whatever is necessary that way so that they will uh, continue to uh, uh, be with you. And so uh, Jesus had to leave, but he was coming back. And that's the thing that we look forward to, his sure return. He, he'll return at the end of that flight. Uh, he's been gone a long time. And sometimes when people are away, it seems like they're, they're gone for, for a long time. I often think of uh, missionaries being in the church, of course. It, you think of missionaries a lot, pray for them. And I can imagine the families of some of these missionaries uh, when they uh, take off and they're gone for uh, five or six years or so, a long time. And, uh, oh, it must be so hard to, to see that family member go to the, some other country. Uh, but uh, you know that sometime they're going to come back and you look forward to that time when they'll uh, return uh, from that trip. And so Jesus, yes, he's gone for a long time, but he's coming back one of these days. We have that assurance. He came in humility, came in a, as a babe in a manger, came with all the limitations of human flesh. He could only be in one place at a time. He got tired, we know that, because he, he went away to rest and uh, he ate and depended on that. He'd get hungry and thirsty. And remember him asking the woman at the well for a drink of water. All those limitations. But when he comes back, he'll have no uh, limitations. He'll return as the Lord and the King of all. In the First Timothy chapter uh, 6, <coughs> we hear uh, Paul's uh, mention of this and uh, he says in the 14th verse that uh, thou shalt keep this commandment without spot uh, re re unrebukable until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ which in his time he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate the king of kings and lord of lords he is coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. What a great day that is going to be. And we look forward to that with joyful anticipation that Jesus is coming again. In the Titus, the letter to Titus, Paul said that this is our, our great expectation. Titus 2 and uh, chapter 13, or verse 13. He says, uh, uh, bring uh, Paul's journey diligently that nothing be wanting. Sorry, I got the wrong chapter. Right verse, wrong chapter. <laughs> Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of a great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we're doing. Looking for that blessed hope. That's the... Uh, expectation we have that Jesus is coming again and the ascension was that preparation it tells us that this same Jesus who is he going to be what's he going to be like how is it going to work well read the gospels it's the same Jesus that same Jesus who loved and healed and taught and even gave his very life for us that's the Jesus that same Jesus I, I like that phrase this same Jesus. Not somebody all ever different and would wonder, well, what's he going to be like? He's the same one that we read about in the Gospels. The same one who saves us by his grace. The same one who keeps us day by day. This same Jesus is coming back in all his power and glory to be King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, what a day that will be. So when we look back to the time when he ascended, we look forward to the time when he will descend. I wasn't there when he went up, but I'll be there when he comes back. Praise his name, because he'll come back with his saints and to raise up 
those who are still here. What a day. He ascended to heaven, giving time to prepare to meet him. Have you prepared? Are you ready to meet Jesus when he comes back again? I trust you are, and by the grace of God, you'll be able to meet him rejoicing because you're ready and expecting his glorious return. Thank you.